As expected, macroeconomic challenges arrived to test very sharp appreciation witnessed in the first quarter, where we saw equity values increase by greater than 10%. In May and June, long interest rates rose, triggering a sell-off in bonds and equity income-oriented securities. Despite those dynamics, U.S. small cap continued to chug ahead, increasing by greater than 3.5%, which outpaced the S&P, which was up less than 3%. The U.S. market has become somewhat of a darling for global investors, um, as the U.K. has been impacted from unemployment and austerity measures, and the emerging markets have cooled. The U.S. economy dem demonstrated resilience in Q2, where we've seen good economic indicators out of autos, housing, and energy underpinning this newfound appetite for both institutional and individual investors in U.S. equities. The ClearBridge Investments small cap growth strategy continued to outperform both on an absolute and relative basis following similar performance in the first quarter. Holdings in energy, financials, and materials helped both relative and absolute performance, while industrials detracted. The first half of the year was a very productive year for us, where we added 13 new names to the strategy, five alone in the second quarter. Adding names across various areas of the economy and sectors, as well as in different levels of growth, adding both steady eddy growth companies as well as hyper growth businesses. In addition, we trimmed or exited a number of positions in the portfolio where the market caps had increased out of small cap territory into mid cap land. U.S. stock market and small cap stocks especially have risen sharply over the last year. We believe that there will continue to be strong investment opportunities in carefully vetted and well-managed small cap companies. U.S. small caps are continuing to do well, even with this increase in interest rates. That, you know, we had this increase in interest rates, bonds sold off, uh, equity income, security sold off, but small cap was up 3.5%. With changing types of environments, interest rates, commodities, what have you, that we feel that we built a portfolio to withstand, withstand uh, and outperform through an entire market cycle. Mm -hmm. And as such, we feel that we've invested in the companies that are going to take advantages of those dislocations rather than be victims of them. I mean, we've had an unbelievable um, uh, appreciation in the first half of the year. And if you annualize that, it's at very high rates. And so, um, you know, we think we, we at, in our first quarter commentary, we predicted that there was not going to be a smooth year. There was going to be some fits and starts. And so that's what we experienced sooner rather than later. And I think that people need to kind of, you know, rejigger their portfolios and think about maybe a raising rate environment. And what does this mean for my bond portfolio, my overall asset allocation? And so that will provide some opportunities for individual stock uh, pickers to find uh, the companies that are being dislodged from that asset allocation process.